What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is Invest 91L. It is approaching the Windward Islands as we speak right now. We have the latest from the National Hurricane Center. We now have an 80% chance of formation in the next five days, ladies and gentlemen. And it doesn't give us any additional context. The advisory doesn't. Um, actually, uh, yes, it does, as a matter of fact. Um, a broad area of low pressure uh, located just east of the Windward Islands continues to produce a large area of showers and thunderstorms. Earlier data from the National uh, from Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunters indicate that the system does not yet possess a well-defined circulation center, with the majority of shower and thunderstorm activity displaced to the southeast of the uh, broader rotation. However, upper-level winds are forecast to become more conducive for development, and a tropical depression is, quote, likely to form over the next several days if the system remains over open waters while moving west about 15 miles per hour through the Windward Islands and the Caribbean Sea. There will be another air, uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft out tomorrow morning. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you what we're talking about. We're talking about the deep layer wind shear. In the entire Caribbean Sea, it is open season right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the invest right there. It's uh, having a little bit of trouble with that, uh, that wind shear at the northern part of it, but once it enters the Caribbean, it's open season. This thing can, uh, can do whatever it wants with it. And aided with that is the global sea temperatures, which, I, which as you can see right here, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius right there, which is about 83 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit right there. Plenty of warm water. The ocean heat content, let's keep that in mind. We're looking at ocean heat content values once it crosses into the Caribbean, crossing 100 and then goes down to back to about around 75. And then it spikes up to 125, 150 as it's approaching Central America right there, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see, let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite. The satellite looks very impressive, first of all. I know there's not closed circulation right there, but this is just an invest. The cir circulation already, the broad rotation, as it looks really impressive, honestly. And uh, all this convection is really concentrated in one spot, which is what you want to see if you want to see tropical development, which uh, as long as it uh, uh, stays out to sea is fine, but this is approaching land, so this could be a massive issue. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you the track models and the intensity. The track models have this thing moving through the Windward Islands, um, basically north the ABC Islands and Venezuela, and then it moves uh, towards Central America. We're not entirely sure where it's going to be making landfall, either Nicaragua or Honduras, but it is within that area right there. I have seen models shifting more towards Nicaragua, although I have seen a couple of models hit, hit, of it hitting the Yucatan Peninsula. We'll have to keep an eye on it right there. The track honestly reminds me of that of Hurricane Felix back in 2007, so I want everyone to keep that in mind. The intensity models are also pretty interesting right there. Intensity models at 18Z. We have the majority of the models here reaching hurricane strength in the next three days, and then potentially major hurricane strength in the next uh, in the next four to five days right here, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, this thing could potentially be a major hurricane that hits the Central America, similar on scale to that of Hurricane Felix in 2007 and Hurricanes Ada and Iota in 2020. I know you don't want to hear this, but... This is what the models are saying right now. It's in very good conditions. There's not very much dry air. There is plenty of warm water. Very little wind shear to stop this thing. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you some mile runs. The HMON, HWARF, and GFS, uh, to be exact. The HMON has this thing developing, organizing, uh, strengthening eventually. Uh, we're not entirely sure what's going on there. So that you, so you see this thing. Uh, it's, yeah, apparently... Uh, the HMON has this thing over Venezuela. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, this is this is going on. It starts to st organize a little bit into a tropical storm. This is the latest run. If we take a look at the track models, the H it does have it uh, near v Venezuela and the ABC Islands, but I th I think this runs a little messed up on tropical tidbits. Um, I'll have to keep I'll have to keep an eye on that and see what the next run talks about. But the GFS run, we're gonna go ahead and talk about that real quickly. The GFS run is pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and show you what what's going on. GFS, this thing organizes, develops. I don't know what's wrong with this run right there. I'm not entirely sure this thing isn't going to be making landfall moving south through Venezuela. Um, just give me a couple, or just give me a second. All right, so this thing's over C once again. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this model run, so I do apologize for that. Let's go ahead and show you the CMC, see if 
uh, see if that's a similar situation right there. No, it's not actually. The CMC, we're going to go ahead and show you this. It's, you see this thing organizing, developing, uh, moving kind of close to the ABC islands. Then this thing potentially becomes a hurricane the next three and a half days from this model run right there as this moves through. It really starts to strengthen, potentially down to up to Category 2 strength as it's approaching Nicaragua, makes landfall, re-enters the sea, uh, makes landfall in Belize, and then re-enters the sea again after in, in the Bay of Campeche and makes landfall as a tropical storm in Mexico right there, ladies and gel uh, gentlemen, right there. So definitely an interesting scenario to take a look at for sure. I'm sorry about the HMON and uh, CMC. The last one all we're going to talk about is the H-Wharf. The H-Wharf has always been a pretty interesting run. The H-Wharf, you see this thing organizing, developing, kind of starting to strengthen off the coast of the, uh, of the Windward Islands, and then it enters the Caribbean. It doesn't do that much uh, right away. It's going to take some time to organize completely. And then this thing starts to strengthen a little bit. And basically, by the next in the next four days, this is a strong tropical storm. It starts strengthening into a hurricane. Um, the 18Z run isn't fully out yet, but if we it can take a look at the intensity runs. Um, for 18Z, you can really show where this thing is going. The H Wharf has this as a Category 3 hurricane in the next uh, five and a half days right there, as do the majority of the models. Some of them have it going as high as Category 4 right there. So yeah, this is an interesting situation we're going to have to keep an eye on here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. I will update you guys as the situation progresses. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps you make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. So with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.